the unbelievably slow growth of new minerals out of the seawater itself. Much of the material that accumulates in the deep sea is created by the destruction of rocks on the continent. In a single day, Canada's rivers alone carry 25 million tons of land into the sea. sediment carried by rivers, sea currents, wind, glaciers and drifting ice. Another source is the teeming animal and plant life, the microorganisms living in the ocean. Skeletons of these tiny plankton sink slowly to the seafloor after death. They form a major part of the organic ooze that blankets the submarine topography. The mystery of the underwater landscape was uncovered with the development of the echo sounder. By bouncing sound pulses off the sea floor, a continuous and precise depth record is obtained. time a detailed view of the ocean floor evolves. A hidden landscape never seen by man, only felt with an electronic cane, three quarters of the surface of his planet. The continental shelf is the shallow margin closest to the landmass. The shelf extends about 200 kilometers offshore reaching an average depth of 200 meters. Geologically, the continental shelf is part of the continental landmass. The shelves are covered in terrigenous sediment, material derived from the weathering of rocks, materials made from the shells and skeletons of plants and animals that lived there in the shallow water, closest to the sun. The mollusks, algae, corals, and snails. Hidden reserves of gas and oil lie trapped beneath many of the world's continental shelves. It is estimated that 19% of the world's production of petroleum comes from offshore operations on the continental shelf. Beyond the edge of the continental shelf, the ocean floor descends gradually to depths of three and four kilometers. This region of steeper grade leading to the deep sea is called the continental slope and marks the transition from the continent to the ocean depths. Oceanographers have probed the continental slopes and found deep gorges and canyons cut into its face.
These submarine canyons course through the sea bottom for hundreds of miles and lead onto broad, flat plains. The development of a coring technology provided a new perspective into the submarine canyons. A piston corer can obtain samples of seabed up to 25 meters in length. extracted from the outer ends of the submarine canyons yield some startling information. While the seabed at this depth was expected to consist for the most part of thick deposits of fine oozes, accumulated by slow settling through the water column. The cores, in fact, revealed material like that found on the continental shelf, nearly 200 kilometers away, and in water less than 50 meters deep. taken along the canyon route show evidence of erosion through beds of clay millions of years old. This evidence suggests that canyons were cut into the continental slopes by powerful undersea avalanches or currents. turbidity currents, torrents of sediment-laden water flowing down the slopes. Denser than the surrounding seawater, turbidity currents deposit their loads on the seafloor at the base of the slopes. On November 18, 1929, a severe earthquake shook the Grand Banks off Newfoundland. 13 international telegraph cables were torn apart. At that time, the cable breaks were attributed to the earthquake. However, a study of these breaks by Dr. Bruce Heason of the Lamont Doherty Geological Observatory revealed a different cause. After this earthquake, 13 submarine cables that linked the United States with Europe were broken. For a distance of 600 miles to the south, one cable after another broke along a 200 mile length until at 13 hours and 17 minutes after the earthquake the last cable broke. What had happened? It was our hypothesis the same thing had happened in 1929 to produce these sand beds. Namely a suspension of mud and water known as a turbidity current which flowed at tremendous velocities down slope carrying down these big loads of sediment. But how to prove it? Well, the obvious way was to find if similar deposits were found south of the Grand Banks as we had already found in the Hudson Canyon. So a couple years later, we were able to get a ship and go out and take 